do. Well, here's some history. I want you to see this. Just, just, I'll, I'll wind up without getting into the tricky stuff. I just want you to hear some names, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So this problem was discussed in 1982 in this book by Swetsett Pickett that came out of the NCI study. The problem was discussed. There was no practical solution to the MRMC problem. Until 1992, when Donald Dorfman, who just died a few years ago, Kevin Burbaum, Charlie Metz, uh, published a scheme that combines classical ANOVA and, and modern resampling statistic, uh, statistical methodologies. And it, for the first time, it was practical. In the next few years, it did a lot of validation of that software. I think most of you would be happy with that. Nancy Obachowski, with her th PhD thesis with Howard Rockett, is a nice paper. Uh, a number of us here worked on this problem. And uh, Frank Samuelson, who's joined us in the last year, has shown us that if you have fewer than, than 10 readers, uh, then our method was a little bit too conservative. And he's showing us how that can be corrected. But you shouldn't be working with fewer than 10 readers anyway. Most people feel, most people do not have a sense of their variability in the population of readers. You really should encourage people to have something in the order of 15 readers. Because I, from what I showed you, they'll be all over the place and the error bars will be very hard to live with. Um, all of the above build on a common framework. There are other approaches from Alicia and, and Constantine. This is the uh, Akron crowd. Uh, the University of, of Arizona group, Harry Barrett and company, have just really opened the horizon on this problem in a really big, nice way. And Brandon Gallus has actually already extended what they're doing. So this problem is still being elaborated on, and we're going to get more and more refined approaches to this problem. The reason I went through this is you will see submissions, and most people will be using the DBM approach. It's the approach with the most validation behind it. So I tell you that. A lot of validation. For a while, some of us thought we had a problem with the obachowski rocket method. And then Steve Hillis at the University of Iowa showed, you know, this is, looks like a two-way ANOVA, but it's really this paper in disguise. And he showed that this, these methods are formally the same, given a few, a few minor points. And so this method has also had a lot of validation. So you will probably see these two methods, and they've been through a lot of validation. Our method is getting better all the time. And if you had 10 or 15 readers, it was always pretty good. Uh, we're going to get a lot more refinement in the next few years. 